Gadget UK here, um, just looking at a Nintendo 64 rumble pack. Um, you've got to get these security screws out first. Um, I found that whilst not the right bit, if you've got one of these, you know, where the, um, I don't know what type that is, you, you can find that as you put it into around the edge there, you'll, you'll, you'll get the little tabs between um, two of the points there, and then you can just rotate it and get it out that way. So it's pretty easy to get those out if you've got one of um, those. Um, bits there that's just got a gap in the middle that works quite well I don't know what that gap is it's probably three or four three millimeters I would say um, in the center there yeah that'll do um, so yeah once I'm inside here there's not much going on really um, still got the motor um, I guess I could try and rotate that could be the motor I guess but on the PCB here there's not much going on either uh, a couple of transistors um, a diode, I can check that. so I can check those, I'll check those two transistors, check the diode, uh, a couple of resistors there, I can check those, what look like potentially a couple of resistors there as well, um, obviously some sort of control chip, there's no visible signs of damage there, no corrosion or anything going on, but there's a surface mark electrolytic there, too. it looks like either 22 microfarad or 2.2 microfarad, could just be um, smoothing the supply, so that might not be relevant, um, so uh, yeah, I'll just get the meter on this and just inspect a few things, measure, make, take a few measurements just to make sure uh, there's a resistor there as well, look. So I can put that. Right, so um, I've got this working, it's actually working now. I haven't actually done anything, um, really, other than take it to pieces and inspect it. But I'll show you a few things that you can do yourself anyway if you want to, you know, if you want to check some of the components and things on there. And I can explain perhaps what I think might have been wrong with it. I think it could have been this mower. I mean, I've just, I just span it around manually like that, and then um, pretty much, you know, measured a couple of components, reassembled it, tested, and it worked. So um, I did disconnect that as well, and we'll do that. In fact, we'll do that in a minute. I'll show you first what uh, a couple of different things. Um, and I'll try and cover this a little bit more on some of the videos. Um, see if I can get the two on screen as well. There we go. So my meter set to diode test. I'll just show you. That component there is a diode. It's marked D. I think D1 on the board. Um, handy for us, it's actually marked as an A and a K, anode and cathode. So in a diode you get uh, a sort of a voltage. Uh, or forward voltage across, well, you should build it, it should switch uh, from anode to cathode. So if you put your positive on the anode, negative on the cathode, you should get a diode reading. Now we're getting a short, so straight away I was thinking, okay, this is that diode. But that's not the case if you disconnect the motor. I did this, I did wonder this, I wondered if the motor was across it. Um, and do that same reading again. There you go. 554, five, that's somewhere between about 470 and about 600 or 680, something like that. It depends on the diode, you'll get um, a reading like that. And if you measure it the other way around, in theory, you should get nothing unless there's another component to um, cross it, but nothing. There we go, so that diode's okay. Um, so it was the motor that was giving that short, and that's to be expected because in a motor, um, that's what you get. You know, it's a coil that goes around the whole thing from one from the plus to the negative. So. Um, I don't know if I can check that on there, yeah I can. If I reconnect the motor. I'm gonna measure across those two points. Should be something like nine ohms or something I think. Yeah, so I can get this all on screen so you can see it. There you go, that's the reading we were getting from the diode, so there we go. So we know that the coil the motor's okay, it's not faulty. Um, when I just stripped this apart a minute ago, I mentioned that was a resistor. It looks like a resistor, it's not. Um, and what you can see on the board there, F1, you've got a little wavy fuse. Thing there, sort of going on, so it's a fuse. Um, interesting, these have got fuses in, so uh, yeah, we can measure across that. Put that on diode, there you go, short pretty much. Put on resistance, put it back 12 ohms or 10 ohms or something like that. Let's have a look. Hmm, it's quite a lot lower than I thought, actually. Uh, yeah, a couple of ohms, so. The fuse is okay, so it's, you know that, that's something worth checking on these. Obviously, you can clean the board up while you get here, and I'm, I'm going to do that in a minute, clean the connector up. Um, but that cap, not done anything with it. Transistors, again, put your meat on diode because transist uh, transistors, the way they <coughs> measure really is, is if you've got two diodes um, across them. So, from I think like uh, I don't know, these are marked actually. Is that, I think that's a, where is it? 
yeah, so from the base to mid, so I'm not sure that's wrong, let's just check that way. Yeah, so one way we've got a diode reading. Let's just check the opposite there, that should be nothing, that's correct. And then check from the other two pins, that's fine. Check that way. There we go, so reassembled and all cleaned up. I'm going to clean up uh, where this connects into the game controller now and put some sandpaper in there, some socket side on the controller. Um, but it's worth taking these apart. If you've got one that's completely dead, I would suggest that fuse, first of all. I'm surprised if that's uh, a relatively common fault on these. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.